Yeah. So when you, when you, you know, I guess you, you, when you first started teaching, you already basically added that unit in, right? Um, has it changed over the last two years? Yeah. So I ended up actually uh, doing a conference presentation where I kind of reflected on um, how I realized, and partly I think it was a result of realizing or kind of like remembering the things I'd written about with my dissertation about the interconnectedness of, you know, um, others people's happiness with your own happiness. I realized that even the term like self-management doesn't, um, doesn't kind of encourage a mindset of thinking about, you know, attending to your own emotions, attention, awareness, things like that. Um, in a more holistic way. So I think um, that on top of, again, thinking about the realities of everything that was happening in the world and how we need to attend to those, like you can't, you know, I, I guess um, there's a lot out there with mindfulness where um, there's the term of like neoliberal mindfulness where it's, um, or neoliberal self-care where it's like, you know, positive vibes only is the one that I see a lot. Um, or even uh, one of my students came up with uh, at the end of the semester, one of the semesters was like, oh, I found this really great meditation. And the meditation was like, um, had sayings in it. It wasn't really all, even much of a meditation versus like, um, I imagine myself as wealthy and I imagine myself as this. And it was like, you know, that kind of... Um, more individualistic version of self-care where it's like um it it treats even uncomfortable emotions that I think we should be feeling in response to things that are happening around the world as like things to avoid or distract yourself so it's like you have to be very very careful of how you frame mindfulness as well as which um which version of mindfulness you're going to kind of <laughs> adopt so I think there are some um, versions of my like mindfulness out there that are very, again, individualistic and um, not not concerned with social justice issues, violence, things like that. So, so I think I've um, I realize how how much more I need to be intentional about not only like not presenting that type of mindfulness, but also, which I think I've always tried to do, but also literally calling up and, and kind of pointing out to people, hey, there are these other versions of mindfulness that you're going to come across. So if you didn't like the mindfulness exercises that I've offered and you kind of go exploring on your own, you almost need to be, to practice a type of literacy with that to understand like how these types of mindfulness are they're not supportive of a type of wellness that is holistic and is caring and based in kindness, um, kindness and compassion for other people. So, I think I, I kind of mirror that a little bit in the, in the last couple of years that the design courses I've been teaching have been more and more about, I guess, like designing for social justice type of ideas um although it's probably too subtle like it's probably like they are things I believe in but I don't think I've been explicit enough in um getting my students to think specifically about how do you how do you um you know design for marginalized groups or or for accessibility or something like that um, or for like uh, fighting oppressive systems or whatever, right? Um, and I think this past year or this summer, I mean, it's only been a month or so <laughs> for summer, but I've done a lot of sort of thinking already and talking to other colleagues and everything. I think next year it's going to be the 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 stuff that I teach that I'm going to cover in my design courses are going to be much more explicit in terms of how do you design for mm. um, 
people who who don't have um, the power to um, you know express themselves or have their voices heard and everything right how, how do you make sure how do you design for their voices 